Hello, I'm Vahid Razavi with BizCloud. I'm here with Deborah Barron, CEO of uh, Newix North America. Correct. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Deborah. You were on an interesting panel yesterday. I wanted to learn a little bit more about the panel that you were on. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me about the panel and share it with our audience uh, what you guys discussed? Sure. So the panel is called um, Too Big to Fail, D Big Data and Security. Right, so what, what is that about? That's about the fact that we have a gargantuan amount of data, some call it a tsunami of data that's hitting us. And the question is, there's a lot of value in that data, right, to do analytics and figure out what your customers are buying. But there's a lot of private information, there's a lot of risky information out there. Let me give you one example. Okay, the NSA story came out during the panel. And so people are wondering, what does this mean? Um, and most of the panelists, along with me, started out, you know, I was a data modeler, another guy was a network security guru, and we're all wondering, is the problem getting better or getting worse? You know, the more data, the bigger the problem. Too big to fail. The more data you have, the more vulnerabilities you have, right? So where does that come into play in the everyday world? The, where we see it, Nuix's clients in particular are financial services, pharmaceutical, large regulatory agencies, large service providers. Um, if you do business and you run a credit card, then your life, your revenue depends upon the use of credit cards. Well, there's something called the, you know, uh, credit industry standard, PCI, and what that says is if a personal credit information um, is inadvertently or on purpose leaked or made available to the public, then that's a violation and as a business um, you might be shut down for using credit card transactions. So what do you do about that? In a simple sense, you can t take simple steps using lots of available technology. Nuix ha happens to be one of those companies who can do an audit, sweep your file shares, sweep your email systems, because honestly, employees aren't bad actors. They're not stealing those credit card informations, but it happens to be sitting out in spreadsheets on a file share or in an email um, or sitting on our smartphone in a text message, right? And it's because it's quick, it's convenient, and you're just trying to get the job done. You're trying to... Um, you know, fulfill a purchase order or your customer is purchasing merchandise or you're helping a customer over the web try to figure out how to get the credit card number information correct or the, or the security code. So it happens every day. It happens all the time. And what businesses don't realize is the risk is quite high. Um, but the, te the technology is available today to address it. So in, in regards to the technology that's available today, you guys talk a lot about security. Is there a general consensus that came out of the meeting in regards to how secure can you actually make your infrastructure against the overwatching eyes of the government and the NSA? Is it possible for it to be secure enough to be able to really protect your data from them? Right. So the truth is perfection is the enemy of good. So what do I mean by that? That you've got to make your best efforts. You've got to demonstrate a good faith, routine effort to protect and secure your information. Um, with that in mind, you know, it's, so my training is in economics and math, right? So everything is a balance, right? To the cost benefit analysis, right? So if you make a good faith effort, you make your investments, you take a proactive stance, doing an audit, right? Doing sweeps, doing fraud monitoring, then that's a good faith effort. And, you know, in a court of law, it's not a test of perfection, right? It's a test of reasonableness. Are you taking reasonable steps? Are your measures um, based on best practices? Now, one thing you mentioned, uh, you have operated a sandbox where you're collecting data from various repositories in the sandbox and making it available to developers. And some of that data, yeah. of course, comes from government agencies. Yes. Um, so could you tell me how a sandbox like that is used and, and what tools you guys make available uh, to people that are interested in, in learning about Nuix and, and your e-discovery products in, in terms of using the sandbox? Sure. So the sandbox is a data set. And the data set is every day human-generated information, we call it unstructured information, emails, um, Word documents, spreadsheets, the things, PDFs, um, zip files, or PSTs, that's like a whole bunch of emails stuck together. And it turns out that that's the kind of information that's hard to index, right? If you're on a website, there's open source indexing technology like Lucene. We were talking earlier, you worked for FAST, I worked for Autonomy, we're very, uh, yeah, we have a lot of history in the enterprise search arena. The challenge inside the enterprise behind the firewall is that those kinds of, of complex 
compound documents are not easily um, indexed with open source. So you need some of the intelligence, some of the proprietary combined with some of the standard. Um, now the purpose of the sandbox again is to allow a, a company's legal or investigative department to try out tools against a common data set. So um, we all remember when the Enron Corporation melted down. Well, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, um, you know, subpoenaed all kinds of email records from the company, and then through the Freedom of Information Act, that data set was released to the public. So we helped start um, the Electronic Discovery Reference Model, which is a, an industry forum that creates standards and practices around discovery investigations and information governance. So we took that Enron data set and we ran it through um, filters for private health, um, in, uh, PII, PCI, PHI, the kinds of information that are getting companies in trouble today. Um, running discovery searches against it and now that data is available for, um, for legal departments, for law firms, for agencies to go in and run their tests, run their tools. We do operate um, actually in an Amazon cloud. You know, you spin up an instance and you can run our tools against it. Um, we've got interesting forensic analysis, skin tone analysis, um, some other clever multimedia so what are the things, in regards to the analysis, I just noticed that you guys launched a director product. What is that all about? Oh, that's so exciting. Thanks for asking. So it turns out that um, doing discovery, doing investigations, takes a fair amount of, of training, right? You have to sort of really understand the process and the protocol and follow compliance requirements. What director does is it makes it dead easy. It's a point-and-shoot application. It's all dashboard driven, it's web-based. You basically say, I want to follow these 10 steps, plug it into a template, push go. It takes care of all the bits. It, it reduces the chance of human error or errors as a result of not as much training and experience. So it, it's, it's like taking a, a powerful engine like a Ferrari and, and dropping it inside a Volkswagen Bug. It's that easy to drive. So that uh, sounds pretty interesting in terms of the users for that. Is it the data scientists? Is it the people that are doing the legal work? Who actually uses your director product within an organization? So the neat thing about director is it now makes it more accessible to from a data scientist who can um, get in there and get in at, at very detailed levels. Um, security professionals, investigators, they, they sort of want the raw engine. What director does is it opens it up now to everyone from an entry-level analyst to, say, a, um, a technology a guru to, uh, a, you know, a high-tech crimes investigator. I see. So if uh, developers want to get their hands on the sandbox and if consumers want to use the director or at least get a test trial for that, yeah. what's the best way to uh, learn about those products? Yeah, so the best way is to hit our website, www.newix.com. Um, there's a nice little 10-minute video. There's, there's longer videos. Um, you can download the product. We, we Actually, this powerful product, we can send it to you on a little dongle. You plug it right into your, your laptop and run it against your own email. It, it illuminates some interesting information. <laughs> I'll be doing that over the weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you, Deborah, for your time this afternoon. I greatly appreciate spending time with us at Data Week. Thank you so much, Vahid. Take care.